Hello YouTube subscribers, friends, amateur poker players of all shapes and sizes and abilities. Thank you for tuning in. This is episode three of my poker vlog. And tonight we are gonna do some poker that everybody who's ever played poker ever anywhere should be pretty familiar with. We're gonna go play some home game poker. Now before we hear all the clicks and everybody turning off, let's just start and say that sometimes a little silliness can be a lot of fun and that not every single poker hand needs to be some kind of breaking new ground. I actually think that's sort of what made the televised poker go down in popularity in that these announcers tried to make every single hand to be like the most greatest played poker hand ever when sometimes it's just a whatever and since more people are familiar with home poker I would like to maybe try to find something in today's session that can apply to whether you're taking your game to a casino or a major tournament or a minor tournament or you just continue to play at home so that's what today's episode's about I'm going to show some concepts that I think are maybe overlooked for us amateur poker players. So something else I want to maybe point out to you guys about why I'm choosing tonight's home poker episode is that because in order for me to really put content out, I have to go play. And the first two episodes, we I took a vacation with the family down to New Orleans and played at the casino there. But I'm back home in Chicago now. And where I live, the Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee is an hour north of me, and the Horseshoe Casino is like an hour south of me, and there's tolls to get to that one, and it's really far, and it's probably even easier to go to Milwaukee uh, than it is to travel down south. So I need to be able to go play wherever I can play. And I can't really guarantee that tonight's, that tonight's play is gonna be all that much. I, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh, the poker players there aren't going to be, some of them are going to be okay, but some of them are going to be probably not okay, and I, I don't know, uh, most of the guys I'm not going to even know, I'm only going to know one person there, and they're all going to make fun of me for having my own poker channel, um, for sure, they're going to be like, how many views do you have, and I'm going to be like, know your business, right, <laughs> um, but tonight's episode should be fun. I'll, I'm going to put it together as, as best I can. And, and we're all in here to learn a little bit. And I hope I can um, entertain you along the way. So let's go do this. All of us amateurs and amateurs in any endeavor, whether you're talking sports or like home improvement, woodworking, uh, amateur video making, you're going to have a, a little bit of a or a big bit of discrepancy in skill levels that you know you can look at Bob Vila on on this old house and he can make all these miter joints and you go home and you try to make the same thing that he did and you have firewood instead of a beautiful chest of drawers and the same can be said for any sporting event and even poker and I think one of the things that an amateur is not as good at is ranging players hands and it's been really popular and a concept that some of the more skilled poker players are drilling into your head. But what we do is, and here's the concept that I want to talk about, is we fail to take away our own personal bias as we construct the range. For example, we say, how would I get into this situation? What would I do in this situation? What range of hands would I have in this situation? And we build our villain or our opponent's hand based on our own personal bias. And I just think a professional or a really good hardcore amateur is better at being neutral on that concept than maybe someone who plays once or twice a month and doesn't have the experience or because they're just not as adept at taking their own personal bias out so I just call it a personal bias filter problem I don't have a fancy acronym which would be handy but so that's what this first hand is about it was pretty straightforward I have King Queen of Diamonds 
I limped. It's literally the second hand of the night. Guys are still getting drinks, having pizza in their mouth and whatever. And I just throw a dollar and we're playing 50 cent dollar. And there's seven players. Stack sizes are like 70 bucks each, $60 or something like that. So there's, you're not talking big money here. But the concept is what I want to focus on. And so I just throw a dollar and I won the first hand. I just limped the second hand. And it goes limped around, and the board comes down, king, eight, deuce. And I bet, and there's like a caller. The turn is a queen of clubs, and it completes the flush, and I don't love the card, thinking to myself, what could people have on the flop like that? And obviously a flush draw is one of the things. And here the flush gets completed, and I've got two other players, and I'm in the middle, and I don't really love my spot. But then again, I have top two pair, so you got to do something, right? So I'm thinking about what I can do, what I can bet, what would happen if somebody raised, how much would they raise, and who knows against these two guys. I, I really have no idea. One guy I've never even met before. Everybody's still jabbering and chirping, and it's even hard to just concentrate. So I bet $6, trying to maybe do a little bit of pot control. Who knows? One guy calls, the other guy folds, and we go to the river. And thank God, the river is a king. It's nice to bet when you have the nuts. <laughs> so I have kings over queens, and it makes betting the river a lot easier. When the king hits, the host of the party goes out and is not in the hand, says, oh, there could be a full house out there. Oh, there could be a flush out there. Everything is, or somebody could be bluffing, because I think he caught himself, because he said, or somebody could have nothing. And I was, I, gave him, I didn't give him a shot in the eye or whatever, but I was like, geez. So I'm trying to range this player. What could he have? Here I have king queen. I have, you know, the effective best possible hand you could have. And I'm like, what could he call me with? What could he have to get in this situation? What would I have in this situation? I'm like, I would definitely need to have a king in my hand. I would definitely need to have, you know, pocket eights or or a flush. I would probably call off with a flush. I'm not very good at poker. And he turns over five deuce. He called me with bottom pair, and he just called down with a deuce in his hand. So I guess the takeaway, like I said, is that it's really hard to range another opponent when you keep asking yourself as you're ranging, what would I do in this situation? And this is a, like an extreme example. You could not expect a major tournament to have someone call you down on a board like that with a pair of twos. So it's just an example of how, it's, how difficult it is to range at all let alone against an opponent who's trying to deceive you. Um, this opponent was not trying to deceive me. He just called down with a pair of deuces. Uh, he told me afterwards that he was allergic to money, and that's why he called. So there's that. The second hand I want to talk about here is a really weird hand in that I have queen seven suited. I limp in. It was a pretty much a limp fest. There was a couple of raises, but it was, for the most part, a limp fest. And I limped. And it goes around a couple guys. It was almost a family pot until the big blind, the player to my immediate right, raises to $15, which was at at our table. It was a big, decent-sized raise. And I'm like, well, got to throw this hand away. And it was seven players behind me to call, or six players behind me to call. I'm, you know, who knows what anybody could have. So, of course, everybody calls except for me. I'm the only one who folded. And there was like $75 in the pot, and it was the biggest pre-flop pot of the night the flop it doesn't really matter what the flop came down the concept i want to talk about here is your bet sizing because it can really get you into trouble if you play against some skilled players the flop came queen seven two i would have flopped two pair which would have been a super monster but let's not be results oriented you can't call queen seven out of position to a $15 raise that's just asking for trouble. The bet on the flop was the player to my immediate left and he donks into the pre-flop raiser for $10 into a $75 pot. And I even commented, I shouldn't have probably, I, I just sort of whispered it to myself, $10 bet into a $75 pot. And then there was like four callers. So the pot was like 120 bucks, and the turn comes down, whatever, and he again leads out $10. So the concept here is don't size your bets post-flop in relation to what is normal 
or what you think is a big bet or a small bet. The concept here is take into account how much money's in the pot and how much money you have in front of you. Uh, it's called stack to pot ratio and you need to keep that in mind. And it will help you out immensely because it will prevent you from getting yourself into crazy bad situations where people can suck out on you. Now the number you want to keep in, keep in mind is 1.5. So if you have $150 in front of you and there's $100 in the pot after the flop, you're pretty much committed to the pot if you have an overpair or top pair, top kicker or better. This is not hard and fast. Please don't rail me in the comments by saying I'm making up something that's hard and fast. It's a general rule that if you're going to lead into a pot on the flop and your stack size is one and a half times what the pot is, you should just be jamming. Because if you bet too small, you're not going to leave yourself any fold equity on the turn or on the river because let's say you bet $50 into that $100 pot. Now you only have $100 and it, you get called and now there's $200 in the pot. And it's a pretty simple call for someone who has any piece of the board if you were to then go to the turn. And it would get even, your stack size would get even worse. Let's say you bet $65 in that $100 pot. Now you have even less money in front of you and the pot's even bigger. So there's more reason for someone to call you down and maybe get lucky on the river. So 1.5 is a pretty decent place to, to, to consider. And don't really say, oh, I have to bet $20 because I raised to whatever. You need to keep in mind your stack size and how much is in the pot and make your bets according to that concept. It's SPR, and I'm gonna try to hit it a little bit more in other videos, but this crazy hand was won by Queen Five, the player next to me, and the player who raised to fifteen dollars had pocket kings that was just sucky there's nothing you could do about it but at least he got let off the hook because the other guy didn't bet enough so there's that all right guys so that's it for today's episode i hope you liked it please don't forget to click subscribe click like check me out on twitter and appreciate you watching i want to give a big shout out to be okay for hosting tonight's poker event um, I booked a slight win. I won about $35. Uh, BOK took most of the money. He won at least $250. A good job. Uh, to all the guys who came out and played with us, um, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. You know, I hope you guys had a good time. Hope we can do it again. And uh, don't forget you guys to watch the video also. And everybody out in YouTube land and poker land, I hope you guys get some good runs. Uh, hit a couple flushes and make some big hands. The next video that I plan on playing and recording for is the World Series of Poker Circuit event in the Potawatomi Casino in Milwaukee. Uh, it's going on during Super Bowl week, and I plan on going up there maybe Super Bowl Sunday or maybe the week the day before. So if you're in the area, come out and check it out. Check me out. I'd love to meet any of you guys. It's really cool that you guys are supporting my channel. I appreciate it a lot. And I hope to see you guys soon and see you next time. Bye.